morning. Hi, everybody. Um, I have to say, first of all, that I'm really blown away by the presentation so far. You guys have actually uh, done a lot of my background work for me. And you know, I think that it's, it's really incredibly uh, exciting and encouraging when we talk about renewable resources and, and what we have and what we need to do that I would say the most important renewable resource we have, which I will put ahead of water or the sun or whatever, is you guys, the next generation. You know, you guys understand these issues really well, really deeply, and so I'm very encouraged that uh, that the the generations that are coming up are are going to be mindful of the issues that we all face and are going to are going to get us to where we need to go. So, with that. Uh, I want to talk about a, a few projects. Uh, we are architects, and so what we normally do is design buildings. Sometimes architects design little things, medium-sized things, bigger things, like buildings or neighborhoods or even cities. So uh, I've been thinking about, uh, in my office recently, about the cities of the future and how uh, we can deal with the, the, the problems that they uh, represent for the next generations to come. And this is kind of a, a, an overview of of where we're heading in terms of population and sort of where some of these problems are coming from. So now in 2012, the world has about 7 billion people in it. Half of them live in the country and half of them live in the city. Uh, by 2050, there will be another 2 to 2.5 billion people in the world. And basically all those new people are going to live in cities. So the, the size and number of cities is going to grow enormously, and that's really where the uh, sort of um, future environmental footprint of the world is going to be defined. So let's uh, sort of uh, discuss these issues in terms of a place we all know well, New York City. This is New York, uh, a city that is one of the biggest in the world. There's uh, over 8 million people here. It's a city that has uh, taken a very long time to grow to this size. It's been 200 plus years getting to where we are now. And the interesting thing is, if you think about the 2.3 billion people that the world is going to add by 2050, that would be the equivalent of adding a new New York City every month and a half for the next 38 years. And that would add up to, if it was all New York cities, another 274 or so New Yorks by 2050. So there's going to be a lot of cities being built, and you know how they get built is a really big deal. So the project we're looking at here that we're calling 2050 City is kind of a technical exercise. We're really wondering, is it possible to build a city like this, if it's a new city, let's say, that is truly sustainable? And I think that we all know that cities generally are sustainable places because they're efficient. You know, there's so many people living close together, provides opportunities to have uh, mass transit, efficient use of energy, efficient use of water, and so on. So cities are pretty sustainable as they are, but there is a long way to go. And we are wondering to ourselves, can we make a city totally sustainable, that is, a city that actually generates all its energy renewably from within the city boundaries, that raises all its food within the city, that gets its water sustainably, and so on. And you know that would almost be like building a city on the moon or something, where it would be in a dome and it would have to be self-sustaining. You can just imagine, otherwise you wouldn't survive. Now, we're not suggesting that we want to build cities in domes, but we're, we'd like to see if it's possible to have cities that perform that way. So just looking at. Uh, what are the issues that we need to think about, the services we need to provide in this kind of totally sustainable city. And you know, the categories have already been discussed. Energy is really the, the biggest issue in a sense, because already on the planet we have all the matter, all the material that we have and that we're ever going to have. What we need to animate it, to make it work for us, is energy. So how we get that energy, what form it is, is incredibly important. And it has to be renewable. Uh, water is a big deal bigger deal in some parts of the world than others. There are many of these cities that will be built are being built in places where there is literally or literally no fresh water available. So how does that happen? I think the solution in most cases is going to be desalination, which we've already heard about, where you take energy to take the salt and other materials out of seawater, which there's plenty of, so that we have fresh water we can drink. Food is a big deal. 
We've heard a lot about this, and we've heard uh, Dixon de Pommier talk about this, and the idea of bringing food into cities has been a great inspiration to me, and I think it's something that uh, can make cities better, better places, can make buildings better, uh, better for, for, for everybody. So that's a, a wonderful challenge for us all. But then a few things that often don't get considered when we talk about sustainable cities. One is production, making stuff like the iPhones and computers that we use, the cars we drive, the buildings that we live in. We build those things, it takes a lot of energy to do it, we gotta get that energy sustainably too. And finally, transportation, how do we get around? Not just inside the city, not just riding the subway, but when we visit grandma in California or we take a vacation to Europe by airplane, that uses a lot of energy. So uh, these are all things that added together make for a very, uh, very big challenge. So let's look at some of the, uh, how these, uh, these, these issues uh, play out in the context of New York City. So here is the tri-state area. New York City in yellow is about 786 square kilometers in size. And uh, this is our present water system. We are really, really lucky here to have this wonderful system uh, that has been uh, built over centuries, actually, where we have these large areas, 4,800 square kilometers, about, say, four or five times the area of New York City upstate where the rain falls, is collected uh, in reservoirs and runs down to us in uh, aqueducts uh, and uh, pipelines and so on. So uh, that's, we're lucky in this part of the world where there is a lot of rain that we can get away with this type of uh, water system. Now, uh, food is, uh, we've heard a lot about, it's an incredibly important issue. For the vegetables and fresh produce that we eat within the city, we use fields, conventional uh, outdoor fields that are about 900 square kilometers. And these are all over the place, around this area in California and South America and so on. Um, then there's animals, meat that we eat. And the animals themselves are not that big a deal. The space to keep all the uh, chickens and cows and pigs and so on that go into our diets is about 25 square kilometers. The big deal is the food that the animals eat. And that uh, takes up about 120,000 square kilometers right now. So you can see our diet has a big, big effect on our footprint. And you can see that you know, this uh, area is an area of fields bigger than New Jersey and Long Island and a big chunk of Connecticut and so on put together. So uh, food is a very, very big part of our footprint. So OK, what happens if we uh, project this, well, oh, if we add energy to the mix? We don't have this system right now, unfortunately. But if we wanted to get all the energy for New York City to power all these things, our operations plus the food and so on, uh, we would need a solar panel field that would be about 3,600 square kilometers, a pretty big area. And you can see that it's a little unlikely we're going to build something like that anytime soon. But now projecting into the future, 2050, fortunately, technologies do get better. And we can assume pretty reliably a lot of things will improve. Um, we will use energy more efficiently in everything we do. That's the trend. And we will, um, we will switch from uh, field agriculture to hydroponics. And you can see what that does to the size of the growing areas that we have. You know, that 120,000 uh, square kilometer circle is down to about 770 uh, square kilometers. So it's actually less uh, area than New York City. And then the, all the rest together, including the solar fields, are shrinking. So you can see now that if you take all these elements, the city itself, the space it takes to grow our food, and the uh, solar energy source, put this all together, it sort of feels like that might be a city. You know, That might be something that feels like a city and yet is totally self-sustaining. So that's a hope. Nobody's done it yet. Uh, I hope we'll do it. I hope we'll all have a, a part in making it happen. So now let's look at some real projects that we've done. And these are kind of pieces of the puzzle, if you will, of the sustainable city. Um, these are all in New York City, which has been a terrific place, very open to, to green innovation in recent years. The first of these is a project we completed about five years ago, a subway station uh, out at Stillwell Avenue, Coney Island. And this was an old station, almost a 100-year-old station that was reconstructed. And we designed a new solar roof over the tracks. And this was a very interesting challenge in many ways. But it turned out to be a great project. It's a great station helping the community and so on. 
and a really big generator of solar energy. And uh, it's uh, actually, well, what I'm doing here is we're, we're trying to consider uh, the energy impact we have in terms of a kind of scorecard. Stillwell Avenue generates about 25% or a quarter of all the energy that the station uses, which sounds like not much, but the station is really big. It runs 24 hours a day. And actually, that amount of energy is enough to provide all the energy for about 33 houses out in the suburbs. OK, here we have a, uh, a project in um, uh, Brooklyn. It's uh, Bushwick Inlet Park under construction now. It's a park that has uh, spaces for the community uh, back here. It has a green roof over top of it, which is part of the park. It's grass. We collect rainwater, so all the irrigation for this is done by the rain. There's a shade structure at the top, which provides solar energy. That provides uh, a little more than half. OK, here's our grade for this project. So we'll say 51%, so that's like a, maybe a B plus. Uh, but uh, not an easy thing to do. And there aren't many buildings built right now that even do this much renewable energy. So here's another one. This is a project in uh, the Bronx, Bronx River House, uh, which uh, will be under construction within the next year. And this one also has, you see, a roof with solar panels. Uh, again, we collect rainwater to, to do irrigation with. But in this project, we're taking plants and making them an active part of the building. So if you've ever walked into a forest on a hot day, you'll notice that it's quite a bit cooler in there because of the shading, because of the evaporative cooling the plants provide. So what we're doing is kind of taking the forest and wrapping it around the building. And that should uh, make the building cooler in the summer, filter the air, reduce energy consumption, and so on, and also be a living part of the park. And so the leaves will change color over the course of the year. The leaves will fall off in the winter allowing sun to come in the building when we want it, when it's cold outside. And uh, so all this adds up to uh, a building that is uh, supposed to be about, say, two-thirds uh, energy independent. So those solar panels on top are getting us to, I don't know, maybe a B, 67% of our energy. Uh, one more project uh, we're working on called Solar 2 in the East River, just across from Bushwick Inlet Park. Uh, this is going to be a, uh, an environmental learning center, so there'll be exhibition space, cafes, offices, and so on. There'll be indoor and outdoor events. There's already a lot of stuff like this happening there, uh, so it'll be a great environment. This building will actually take all these principles a step further, and we have, uh, starting at the top, a big uh, solar roof that shades the whole building and the whole site. Uh, we collect rainwater from this roof, storing it in this tank. We have a, one of these uh, vegetative walls on the east side, shading that side from the, the summer sun. We're going to have a vertical integrated greenhouse. We're going to have a living machine, a biological system to treat waste. And so it'll be a terrific uh, showcase of what's possible. And this building is going to generate 108% of the energy it uses. So that means actually more energy is produced by the solar than, it's, than is used. So actually, not only are we uh, powering the building uh, cleanly, we're going to be paying back the uh, embodied energy of construction over time. So the last project is one that, this is not a real project. This is a hypothetical project we did for a museum a few years ago. We call it the 2020 Tower. And this is meant to be a uh, very big, very green building, so 150 stories tall. It would be by far the tallest building in New York if it were built, but zero energy, uh, treating and recycling water, all of it, growing food, all of the principles we've heard about. And so you can see, for example, uh, parts of the building will have vertical integrated greenhouses within, like this cafe with strawberries and uh, other types of food. And, uh, Really, this, a building this size is getting to be big enough that it's almost like a small town itself. I mean, this is bigger than some small towns in the country. So it's a mixed-use environment uh, where you have uh, apartments to live in, commercial space. Uh, every 30 floors, there is some kind of special public space, so some special function like a theater complex or a hotel uh, or a university. And at every one of these public floors, there is also outdoor space. So there is a kind of like a park in the air uh, that you can go out and get some fresh air in. And you can even land helicopters every 30 floors up and down the building. The building is built so that most of the energy comes from the solar panels integrated into the vertical 
facade of the building. We also have the greenhouses that you've seen in the renderings vertically as well. And then about two thirds of the energy is going to come from these uh, wind turbines at the top. Uh, because, you know, in this kind of environment, we uh, have um, a lot of shading because, you know, a building in a big city like this is surrounded by 50 story buildings, so you're not going to get as much sun at the bottom. So, altogether, it uh, is meant to add up to uh, sort of a sustainable mini city in itself, and hopefully uh, is uh, a uh, a step on the way to the, the truly sustainable city by 2050. We think that this kind of project could be accomplished sooner than that, 2020, 2025, and, uh, and projects like this are going to be uh, stepping stones on the paths to the, the real sustainable city of the future. So thank you.